for five minutes of questioning. Uh, I was intrigued by, in, from your statement and your written testimony about the, um, you know, let me, let, me, let me start by saying this. We, we as human beings uh, respond to initiatives, or, or incentives, I'm sorry, incentives. Economics is about the study of incentives. And you mentioned uh, the recent payroll uh, changes for your senior executives. And I wonder if you're uh, at liberty to, to discuss how deep that goes, you know, how, you know what level of leadership. And uh, I think that's a novel approach. And uh, I'd love to hear more about that. Um, sure, let me say two things. First, the board of directors took the first step yesterday and it acted a bit ahead of schedule. We ordinarily make these decisions in July, August. But for the 16 most senior people in the company, including our CEO, including me and others, um, with the new fiscal year, which starts July 1, one third of the individual performance element of our bonus will be about one thing and one thing only, cybersecurity. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing. Second, the board did note that when it awards bonuses for the fiscal year that ends at the end of this month, it will take cybersecurity performance of the individual executive into account. But the thing we probably spent the most time as a senior leadership team talking about the last month or so is how to create incentives for everybody. And of course, it's based on the culture of the company and our processes. So, Twice a year, every employee has a, a form and a conversation with their manager. We call it a connect form. And they first reflect and show what they've done, and then the manager comments and they talk about it. And so what we've created is a new piece of this that everyone will have to address on cybersecurity. And the thing I like about it most, to be honest, is it gives every employee at Microsoft the opportunity to think, what have I done? What could I do? How am I doing? And then be rewarded at the end of the year based on that. That, that sounds, uh, that's encouraging. Um, you know, having run a company myself, I think uh, how you tie the incentives drives the performance and what people make the priority. So I, I appreciate that. Let me ask a little bit about your involvement in China. I'd love to get a little bit more detail of granularity on where you are right now. Uh, you know, what's your current posture? Uh, and you know, what are you sharing with the Chinese people? or to the Chinese government, I mean? Are you having to give up code? And uh, what, what the involvement there is, if you don't mind elaborating on that a little bit. Sure, it's a broad topic. Um, we have a few different activities in China. It's not a major source of revenue for Microsoft. Globally, it accounts for about 1.4, 1.5% of our revenue. Um, we do have an engineering team that we have been reducing and we announced most recently that we were offering about 800 people, seven or 800 people, the opportunity to move out of China, and they were gonna to need to move out of China in order to keep the job they have. So we've been reducing our engineering presence. There are two things that we do that we believe are very important. First, we do run some data centers, cloud services, principally, I would say, for the benefit of multinational companies who do business in China. And we're not alone, others in our industry do the same thing. But I, the reason I think this is so important is if you're an American automobile company, an aircraft company, a pharmaceutical company, a coffee company, you need to use the cloud when you're in China. We want their American trade secrets to be stored in an American data center in China. I mean, if I could jump yeah. in, uh, what access does the Chinese government have to that? None. Okay. And believe me, every time there is anything remotely close to a request, I always ensure we say no. Okay. Very specifically on this hack, because it did come from China, can you talk how you are, with your presence in China, ensuring that that uh, source isn't uh, going to use your location in China as a vector? I mean, what other, if you can, what are, what are you doing there to prevent that? I think it involves having very direct, understanding yourself of what your guardrails are, what your limits are, what you can do and what you won't do. You have to know your own mind. We do. 
Second, you've got to be prepared to look people in the eye and say no to them. And that's something I do myself. I was in Beijing in December. I got pushed because there was unhappiness about reports that we've made publicly about attacks from China, about US critical infrastructure, and about you know, influence operations. And I said, there are lines that we don't believe governments should cross. We're going to be principled, and we're going to be public. Mm. And there are many things we're not going to do in China, and there will be things we're not allowed to do in China. But I think at the end of the day, we have to know our principles. Thank you. Uh, my time has expired, and uh, I now recognize the ranking member for his five minutes. <clears throat>